quite a bit now the last couple of days. Uh, so it's a great uh, record of us uh, at this moment and uh, a lot of people around the world have heard it now at this stage and uh, Carl audience and uh, sort of brings a, a tingle on the spine when you hear it, you know. The um, sun is up, obviously people are enjoying themselves around the country. It's early days in the championship, but I mean your team have been one of the stories of it so far. It must have been a nice few days for you, I'm assuming. Oh yes, uh, look, um, you know, obviously we set out there and with the first game against Loud and it was a great win for us, you know, and uh, they were Division 2, so I went down to Division 3 and Kildare were next up, like, and uh, I suppose in, in the eyes of media pundits at least, uh, we were complete underdogs in that case, you know, but uh, we didn't see that with ourselves, quite honest with you, and um, we were quite confident that we could, if we played to our full potential, we could beat Kildare. Did you play on that? I mean, we heard the clip there, Brendan Hennessy talking about uh, how everybody had written you off. Is that something you can use to try and motivate the troops a little bit? Uh, not really, no, to be honest with you. Look, we really were focused on our own performance and getting our own game right. Like We've done a hell of a lot of work on how we play and uh, each member of the panel there can slot in and slot with that team. And um, You know, we were, we were very polished in how we played the game and um, we felt that uh, we, we showed... You know, last year against Stubbs and Martin that we would be able to mix it with teams from Division 1 if we got the opportunity. And uh, at some stage, we felt we would take a scalp. And Monaghan were lucky to get out that good part last year. So uh, we had no reason to fear Kildare. And we felt uh, with a lot of confidence in our own, our own ability now at this stage, you know. Our team is, you know, it's quite experienced. But it's also sprinkled with some very, very talented footballers. And uh, I don't think we get credit for that at all. Like, everybody thinks, you know, talks about it being, you know, a shock and uh, Division 4 teams and Division 1 team. but when you look at the quality of players we have like um, as well as the, the shock is that we're in the, we were in Division 4 for so long Yeah, will you talk to us a bit about that We Owen Shane was down at the game for us over the weekend and he's been raving about what great quality football it was to look at and I don't know if you read Mike Quirk's piece in the Examiner today but he's been I did Yeah, yeah. so he's I mean, essentially making the point that um, you, you haven't got enough credit for the job that you've done that the traditional media are focus too much on the negative of it. Um, so go on, you're, 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 you're not feeling that you're getting enough positive coverage for this? No, I'm not saying we're not getting enough positive coverage, but I'm just saying that maybe the focus of the media is misplaced. Uh, I haven't heard too many yet, you know, analyse the Cardiff football team and, and look through the quality of the players that we have on the squad, you know. Um, I mean, in, 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 in uh, terms of physique alone, I mean, it was probably one of the biggest... Uh, teams in the country uh, they're very very uh, very highly well conditioned um, very experienced there's about 10 that team there for about 10 years and yet they're young men and uh, young men I suppose with you know uh, a fierce drive to finally achieve something um, you know they've been through very dark days and um, their football ability really hasn't been I suppose um, seen on the, on the big scale on the big stage by by the rest of the country, you know, so um, there's no doubt about it like that. You have outstanding footballers there, like quite a few lads have played at this stage uh, with Leinster and so on, and, um, you know, some some exceptional footballers, and um, I think the organisation, Stevie Bott, the team then has really, I suppose, um, got the best out of them in the last 15 months or so. Yeah, we might talk about Stephen in a minute. You, you, just in terms of the, the attractiveness of the team that you mentioned there, is it fair enough to say that, I mean, I, I'm exaggerating here to make my point, but hopefully you get the idea that there's sort of elements of the Jim McGuinness, Donny Gall thing there that maybe over the previous 12 months you were working a bit more on the defence, you wanted to get that right, and ultimately now it's a little bit more uh, about the attacking side of things. Well, look, you know, I suppose all teams, all good teams, all successful teams are based on, on good defence first and foremost. If you're conceding scores, you're going nowhere. And uh, look at, the, you know, I mean, Carroll's National Football League stats over the years will show you that they uh, wouldn't concede in huge score lines. And, uh, you know, obviously going nowhere as a result. So when we came in, uh, that was one of the things we tried to sort out was uh, the scores were conceding. So we've been working very hard on our defending for a long time. And Steve has come into the picture as well. And he's, he'll give the same opinion. Uh, you've got to get your defence right. Uh, all great teams are, are founded in good defence. And uh, when you're hard to beat, first of all, then you have some chance of being in the game. And um, that's, that's, I suppose, where we started from. That was the, the base point, really. And we recognise that, you know, to go further in the championship, we would obviously need to add, you know, an attacking element to our game and uh, develop our attacking play and uh, maximise uh, 
you know, our, our, our playing talent that we haven't. Uh, so we, suppose we tweak our game plan slightly and, uh, we're now, I suppose this year we scored 270 and 240 in the, in the two rounds of the championship. So I know you're, uh, you have a session, I think, this evening. I presume sort of any planned target practice is uh, off, the, off the agenda after the weekend. 16 shots and no wides. <laughs> uh, look, I wouldn't read too much into that. You know, look, it was one of those days where everything went right for us. Um, that doesn't happen too often for any team. And uh, look, it's, it's an unusual statistic that we didn't kick a wide. But uh, I don't not put that down to we're, we're, we're the best forward in the country. Like that. You know, it was just, uh, as I say... Uh, Were you surprised by it? Combination things we we did we did uh, emphasise you know the importance of you know efficiency in in, in attacking and we wouldn't waste any opportunities that we have. But uh, having said that, you know we had a few shots that went over the bar, and um, another day they could have they could have easily dropped short and gone wide. Like were you surprised by it? Or are you seeing? I mean, maybe not to that extent, but are you seeing uh, that kind of efficiency in training? Oh uh, well, yeah, we worked a lot on it. You know, we do work an awful lot on it, uh, uh, and you know we would be very frugal of ourselves uh, in that regard. Like, we've been working very, very hard on that and it would have been, I suppose it's one of the hallmarks of, you know, successful teams, their they're, they're, they're scoring ratios, you know, and um, we've, we've known for, 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 you know, for quite a long time, like, you know, we wouldn't be near the the, uh, the level of the top teams in that regard, you know, so it is something we've been working on and um, you're always trying to improve on it, but like, it's, it's, that's the hardest part of the game probably is converting your scoring chances and, um, you know, you see the best of teams and the best of players uh, making poor short selection uh, choices and, um, you know, uh, fluffing chances when, you, when they look simple from, from, the, from the stand, you know. But, um, no, it was, it was very pleasing last, last weekend that we, we converted them all. Like, but uh, the next day, uh, we have to realise that that's not going to happen every day. Like, and we, that's why defending again is so important because you're not going to get you're not going to get that freedom that we got. We got a lot of space in the second half too. Uh, that that really suited us. Of course, uh, the best thing for we have is a bit of space to, to shoot in. So, what do you do in that regard then in in uh, training this year, uh, this this uh, this evening? Is it um, yeah? What sort, what sort of thing? Tonight, do you is, do? tonight is really only recovery because there's an awful lot of sore bodies. That was a very very physical game on Sunday. Really physical game, a lot of heavy hits there, and really something we'll get back together now and uh, get a bit of rehab done and a bit of loosening out, and we really suppose really start back from next Thursday night, really uh, back at back full training, you know. Yeah, um, some of the top line stuff uh, here, Tarlick. It's you know two championship wins last year that we spoke to you about at the time, uh, first promotion this year in thirty three years, which is incredible, uh, and with a game to spare as well. You've beaten Louth, you've beaten Kildare, both by decent enough margins. What are you putting it down to? I mean, you're there a few years now. Is it the culmination of a bunch of talented uh, players or is this solely at the door of yourself and Stephen Poacher? Oh, it is. No, it's not. Uh, no, no. Look, uh, you have to give credit to players, really, at the end of the day. I mean, players have gone out there performing um, and, you know, I think there's too much made with managers and coaches. Uh, really, you're obviously, you're part of it. Like, but uh, it's really the credit has to go to the players. Like, and we try and put the pieces uh, together that they need to perform to their maximum. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that, as I said, with ten of them are there for for ten years, means that they're guys that are you know they're experienced, uh, they're well conditioned. Um, then I suppose we put I suppose uh, a few other strings of the bow there in the last while with I suppose we're more tactically aware now and um we have a very, very I suppose uh well polished game plan and we we have a game plan that suits our players and um all the pieces of chicks are kinda of there at the moment for us to perform to our maximum potential I suppose really, you know. Uh, where that's gonna take us we don't know but it takes us little for the final so far and it's a game that's winnable for us. Uh, as it is for Leash, it's a 50 50 contest, really and truly. I mean, we played them twice this year, and really there was nothing in either game, and we would have felt maybe we could have won both games. So um, we'd be going in there as confident as Leash would be, and uh, I think it'd be a cracker of a game. If we win that, we're in the final. Yeah. And, uh, that, would be, that would be a fantastic achievement. Um, you speak about the players being more tactically aware, like, and you say it so uh, flippantly almost that, you know, an acceptance that that just happens. There's a lot of teams around the country in a lot of different sports uh, trying to achieve just that uh, with probably less success. So what's the, yeah, what was no, your well, secret to, to getting that across? Now, but uh, I'm not, what I'm just saying really is that, you know, 
there's too much emphasis made on, on, on managers and coaches. I mean, the players are the ones actually executing everything, and, mm. and these players are very experienced, and they, they're you know they they have they have a lot of inputs to this themselves. But uh, certainly, Stephen's arrival has been you know a real catalyst for us. Um, he comes from an Ireland coaching background, and as you know, um, football in Ulster is very tactical and. In some respects, uh, you know, Carlo certainly, maybe the other lesser counties would be naive technically. And, um, you know, um, I think uh, the court to Ulster Championship games, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's really like in the chest. These guys are, are, are so well prepared. And, um, see, he's brought that, uh, that to us. And, um, the lads have bought into it. Um, they've relished it, really. You know what I mean? It's brought a new lease of life to players who are who are there ten years, that they're now preparing on the same level as as uh, top teams from from all over the country. And how do you get them to understand that stuff in terms of the tactical approach? Because you you've spoken about it on the show before, and Stephen has spoken about it as well about the idea of sort of creating a game plan and uh, getting people to understand that, and then moving forward with it. But like practically, what are you doing to get people to understand that? Well, you, 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 first of all, you, you've got, I think you've got to, you've got to, you've got to think it out. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to get players to understand what they're trying to do first of all before you get to the field, and uh, they've got to understand the requirements of the position they're playing. They've got to understand the requirements of the game. And when we go to the field, you know, ninety-five, ninety-nine percent of our training is based on game situations, and we're training it non-stop uh, all the time. So it's becoming, I suppose inculcated into their muscle memory nearly at this stage that yeah. they know what they have to do. Um, we're, crea- we're creating game situations of training all the time. Yeah. We're playing a lot of small games um, which we develop out then into large, you know, 15 aside games and, and uh, we work non-stop night after night on our own game. Mm. And so that's like repeating the game plan so again, correct. the muscle memory correct. just sort of correct. kicks in. Yeah, correct. And, so, and, so you know, and and trying to think about, you know, how the opposition are going to play against you as well, like, and how they're going to do yeah. the contract, what they're trying to do. So, well, yeah, uh, that, that was the next question I was going to ask. So, like, um, different teams dictate different things, and you've already mentioned, and I know you've heard it get over before um, either yourselves or Leash get there, but, you know, Dublin are a very different prospect to most other teams in the country. So, how equipped are you to tweak the game plan depending on the opposition? I tell you what, no, we got over leash first, then we we'll talk with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so even, we'll even, the even in the leash context, because it, I, a lot of what you're saying there is fascinating in terms of the almost the naivety of some of the other teams, particularly in Leinster. And I, to be fair, it's a very reasonable point that I don't think many could argue with. Um, but even in terms of the difference then from a leash to a Kildare, is it? Uh, I presume it's not a, an utter overhaul over the next week or two that it's no, a tweak on the system. No, it's not. No, no. But uh, I suppose it's interesting that. Um, when you compare Leash and Kildare, and we played both of them recently, uh, I would say that Leash are uh, certainly uh, better sort of tactically than, than Kildare, in my opinion. Um, I think they've, uh, they have uh, they have worked out exactly how they want to play the game. Uh, they're executed, and they would have done their homework on Carlo, um, you know, quite well, and. Uh, a very, very in-depth knowledge of our own game, and um, I suppose you know they got the upper hand uh, in Crow Park and uh, fair play to them for that. You know, but I do think that uh, certainly that Leash are definitely. It's funny the two of us are division four teams, or were division four teams. We we would both be quite tactically aware, I would say, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, it's interesting. It's going to be a really, really interesting game because uh, it's the team that has learned the most in the last game is going to win the next game. Yeah, and one of you are going to end up in a in a Leinster final. So uh, yes, yes, yeah, look at it. I mean, it speaks a lot to the uh, the quality that's there. Maybe it's certainly beneath Dublin across the Leinster Championship, and it gets uh, it gets derided uh, maybe unfairly at times as well uh, for all of that. I think so. Yeah, and look, I think the Leinster Championship is very good at pattern. The fact that Dublin is so far ahead of everybody else, mm. uh, and that has created a, a problem in its own right because a lot of counties are. I said, they're beating before they go out. You know, they're thinking ahead and saying, what's the point? We're not going to beat Dublin, you know? And I think that's a very defeatist attitude. Mm. Uh, and it has, I think it has affected, um, it held back counties in the last 10 years or so. And I think the counties that make the move now are probably the, the, the lower ranked counties. And um, the big counties like Clare and Mead, I suppose, are, I suppose, they've had, a, they've, they've had a, the rise open maybe this, this weekend. They both went out of championship. And uh, you would say that they have greater playing resources. And certainly, um, you know, I mean, our neighbours can there would be, we would consider our club set to be very, very strong. Uh, they would have a lot more 
high quality teams to pick from and, and they have class footballers as well you know but mm. maybe I'd, just something just something Something wasn't there last Sunday, but um, certainly you would expect though that Meath and Kildare would be Dublin's greatest rivals uh, because of their population, strength, and depth, and so on. But uh, I think the Carlos and Hufford and, and, and Leishes now are, are, you know, are beginning to beginning to, I suppose, shake the the the, the, the standings in Leinster. And uh, it's interesting to see that uh, Carlos, Leish, and Longford are. Three to the finals this year. Yeah, all right, Tarlick. We'll look at a few. Uh, no matter, to be fair, no matter who gets there, either yourselves or Leash, if it is Dublin you're playing in the final, you'll have 31 counties behind you, obviously. Well done so far, and uh, long may I continue. Thanks for taking the call. Thanks, William. See you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. Off the ball on News Talk. Here at MS, we're committed to lowering our prices on the things you buy most often. That's why from this month, we're introducing MS for Less. With M&S for Less, we're bringing down the prices of a huge range of your favourite products. The same delicious food for a smaller price. Lower prices have never tasted so good. M&S for Less.